Welcome back to a new year of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King, and we're coming to you from the locker room today here on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. Where we're going to be talking some Islander athletics with head coach Willis Wilson of Islander men's basketball and head coach Craig Shaw of Islanders soccer. We also have a special feature focusing on how you can make an impact with Islanders athletics. Right now, let's get things started, though, with the head coach of Islander men's hoops, Coach Willis Wilson. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. Very good. Um, let's go ahead and probably address the biggest story. The biggest story, and that, of course, was Hurricane Harvey that just came through. And, you know, how are you, your staff, and, of course, your players doing, in particular, a number of your players that are from the Houston area? How is everybody doing? You know, after a relatively quiet and productive summer, uh, this is supposed to be the time of year where everything is in a lull and you can kind of get your sea legs before the school year gets going. But uh, this has been one of the more surreal moments, uh, sure. uh, certainly in my time here on campus. Luckily for us, the school had not started, so all our guys were away from the summer and had a chance to get home and were in safe environments, and so we were able to really check on our guys. But man, here locally, and especially just 30 miles to the east of campus here, boy, there's a lot of, lot of Absolutely. devastation, and, and uh, just the, our hearts and prayers go out to all the folks in the Coastal Bend and from the Coastal Bend through Houston and all the way to, the, to uh, Louisiana. It's been a a tough, tough period for us, but uh, really, really glad that we can help out and try to make an impact in, in a positive way. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and look back a little bit uh, to last year. Your team was in the final of the College Insider Tournament, one of six teams to be playing basketball late in March. When you reflect on that accomplishment, how, how do you describe it best? You know, that's a, that's a question that hadn't been asked very much, and it's a tough question to answer. Um, it was absolutely a, a unique feeling to be playing on March 31st. It was a long year with all the work that the guys put in over the summer with a long season. You know, we got better and better as the year went on. And by the time March rolled around, it was fun just to be able to play sure. basketball. Uh, we did game prep. We did a little shooting. We didn't do a whole lot else other than really enjoy the experience in the moment. And I guess the best way I can describe it for me as a coach it was fun to be involved with big time college basketball and to, to have an opportunity to do it on a national stage was, was just as rewarding. Outstanding. Uh, after last season, Islanders all time leading scorer and rebounder Rashawn Thomas, well, he's moved on. It was a senior, he's moved on, and is currently with the NBA's Oklahoma City Thunder training camp roster. Um, what, what are the reports on his progress right now? It's been good. It's been good. There's been a little bit of a lull between now and. Uh, and the summer league, he had a, had a good summer league. The reports back from uh, the staff at Oklahoma City is that he's done a really nice job, a guy that uh, they can see fitting in their, into their future. So I think a lot of that's gonna ride on what Rashawn is able to sure. do uh, in training camp. But just to be able to get that invite back for training camp, I think is a very, very good beginning for him. When one senior class goes, another one, of course, steps in. Uh, you got some great talent and leadership in this upcoming crop, don't you? Yeah, we do. We really do. Uh, Joe Kilgore kind of picked up that mantle back in January when we made some adjustments with our, our, our personnel on the floor and off the floor. His voice got bigger and louder and more productive for us. And so going into this year, uh, Joe is going to be a terrific leader for us. One of the things that's been really fun to watch is he have a means uh, evolution into becoming a, a leader very bright guy and he's recognized some of the things that we lost with Rashawn and so he's a guy that's done a, a great job over the summer of in, inspecting our pace and the quality of the things that we're doing on the floor really uh, showing our young guys what the standard is sure. uh, to be successful in college basketball and especially for where we want to go as a program. Also wanted to uh, address something uh, you, you've got a few new staff members coming into the Islander men's basketball family. Now, a couple faces that Islander fans will surely know, and another gentleman making his first stop on the island. Can you, can you expand upon well, that? Well, let's start with the guy that uh, really was a hero for us uh, during our March run, and that's Cole Martinez is going to be joining our staff as video coordinator. I'm really, really looking forward to, to having Cole around and working with him. He's got a very, very high uh, basketball acumen. Absolutely. He really knows the game, knows our program. And I think that's just going to be a real plus for us. Another guy, uh, Joshua Irving, uh, former uh, Islander. Played in the NCAA tournament back in 06 Island, yeah. uh, Islander champion is yeah. going to be joining our staff as a director of basketball operations. And 
uh, I've gotten to know Josh uh, fairly well over the last six years and just really excited about what he's going to be able to bring to our program. And then uh, Kevin Yeiser, uh, Yeiser uh, comes to us, uh, did, a, did a long stint, started out as an intern with the Memphis Grizzlies. Ten years later, he's still there involved in so many aspects of, of the things that uh, the Grizzlies had going on, but comes highly recommended and a guy that's going to do a great job with their student athlete development. We're really, really looking forward to getting him on board. I think he's going to be a, another great addition. I think all three of those guys are fabulous, but I think we're, we're going to really be able to, to take some steps forward with, with uh, their support. Well, as the shows continue and we continue with Islander Insider, we're going to be updating people on some of the new talent coming in. We'll be talking about them each and every week and try to introduce some of those new faces and talk about what we're expecting to see. But, uh, Coach, I think we're off to a pretty good start. I think we've... We've weathered the storm, and uh, we're ready to go. And I want to wish you, you know, best of luck. Yeah. You know, we've weathered the storm, and amazingly, we, we lost about two weeks' worth of basketball. Okay. But I think the fact of the matter remains, with all the work that our guys put in over the summer, basketball season's only four, four and a half weeks away <laughs> for the start. It gets it pretty quick, doesn't it? So yeah. it's, it's coming quick. So we're, we're not going to have much of an off season yeah. uh, like we've had in years past, but I think with – all the things that the former players help establish sure. in this program, uh, we're going to be able to kind of hit the ground running, if you will, and, and get a lot of things done in the month of September. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Right now, let's send it out to Tamsin Stonebarger with an Islander update. Thanks, Stephen. I'm here at the Dugan Wellness Center on the campus of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Islander soccer kicked off their season in August with many new faces and a brand new coaching staff. Yeah, we've got a lot of things planned. I mean, we've got 17 new girls and only 11 returners um, and a new coaching staff of four people. So um, it's definitely going to be a lot of team bonding. We've got it built into every day um, to where we can spend time just getting to know each other, um, getting to know um, returners, knowing freshmen and transfers, knowing each other and stuff like that. So um, we're going to spend a lot of time on that because it's going to be key to have uh, team chemistry. It's, it's huge for me. Corpus Christi won their second match of the season 2-1 to one, on the road against Texas State, marking their first win of the Coach Shaw era. Islanders Volleyball started their season on a high note with a ring presentation for the 2016 Conference Champions. Here, the Islanders presented rings to administration and support staff and got to finally see their championship bling. Their first match was in Dallas at the SMU Invitational where they defeated Rice 3-1. It gave Islanders fans a preview of what's to come with nine new faces. Um, I just saw a lot of consistency, you know, like we've worked so hard in this preseason, especially having our newcomers being able to step up and me looking back at them and being able to trust them. I just saw just I just saw a glimpse of just how great we're going to be. Returning outside hitter Brittany Gilpin recorded 13 kills on the day, while newcomers Chloe Simon and Rachel Young followed with nine and seven. Well, just being able to practice and having more experience on the outside makes me a lot more comfortable. I'm not as hesitant taking big swings. And I think all around, playing over the summer helped me a lot and just helping with my teammates. My teammates have helped me a lot throughout the season. And it just feels great to be on the outside now. Southland champion Islanders tennis opened practice this month and coach Steve Moore is impressed with their work ethic. You know, we teach two simple things, family and hard work, um, extreme hard work and uh, and then the, the real catch is doing it. <laughs> um, you know, everyone has all these theories, but who does it? And that's kind of the message that I see is that this group worked hard in the summer and they showed up ready to do the hard work. They showed up ready to, put, to be a family and not just have philosophies and theories, but to put those concepts into action. Islanders Cross Country started practice this month with five letter winners returning. When we return, Stephen King will sit down with new soccer coach Craig Shaw. Stay tuned for more Islanders Insider.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we've moved over to the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium to have a conversation with the head coach of Islander Women's Soccer, Coach Craig Shaw. How you doing, Coach? Good night. You can tell right then and there. <laughs> New to the Island University, originally from Australia. Yep. Uh, let me ask you this. You were raised in the sport of soccer in Australia. Tell us about your playing and coaching careers that started there, brought you to the States, ultimately to Kansas, and now here to Corpus Christi. Yeah, it's been a long road uh, to get here to the island. Uh, so I was uh, born and raised in Australia, like you said, on the Gold Coast. Uh, I started playing soccer when I was four. Uh, my dad was involved in soccer. My sisters played soccer. And so in 2001, I had the opportunity to come over to Tennessee at Carson Newman College and get a scholarship to play there. And I played there for four years. After that, I decided that I wanted to get in coaching. Uh, so then I went to St. Ambrose University, did a great uh, assistantship up there, and then uh, was able to go to Ottawa University there. I was lucky enough to get my first head coaching job and was successful there, and then went to uh, Fort Hayes after that, and now lucky enough to be on the island. And we're lucky to have you, as a matter of fact. You had tremendous success wherever you were at, and you've earned this opportunity here in Division One, and, and it, it's, it's a fun ride so far. Now, I, I must address this. I did speak with Coach Wilson earlier, and we talked a little bit about the, the elephant in the room, of course, was Hurricane Harvey. Yep. You know, you were impacted a bit differently because you were, well, your playing season has already begun. As a matter of fact, you were on the road when it struck here on the coast. Uh, now, how, how's it affected your schedule and more importantly, your staff, your student athletes? Uh, it's been crazy, uh, to be honest. And thank God that um, it didn't hit us as, as bad as it could have hit us. Uh, so. Uh, we actually actually had to leave uh, a day earlier than expected. Uh, and then once we got on the road up to Texas State, we actually had to stay up there for three days. Uh, so we ended up one day not even getting out of the hotel room because the storm had got up there and it was just too windy and, and dangerous for the bus to drive. So um, we've had a lot of team bonding chances. And uh, to, to be honest, the, the, my student athletes, the, the girls have honestly done an amazing job with being stuck with each other for five or six days on the road um, with all the changes that have happened. Obviously, we don't have games this week, which we're normally supposed to have games. So with all the changes that ha happened, they've responded uh, amazingly. That's impressive. Uh, I mentioned your staff a moment ago. When, when you arrived on the campus this past January, your first half was putting this staff together. Yeah. Um, your, your assistant coach selections actually are kind of personal to you. You, you have a history with these folks. Yeah, honestly, we wouldn't be in the position we are right now without them. Uh, if I was having to spend all my time training new assistants that I haven't had experience with, uh, I wouldn't have been able to get out there and recruit the 17 student athletes that we brought in that are new. We wouldn't be able to send players down one end with the keepers with Chris and the defenders with, with Hunter. So um, to have Hunter who has coached with me for five years uh, and then Chris coached with me for two years as well. And then Hannah Smith, who's my volunteer coach, she had played for me for four years. So without those people knowing exactly what I want, we wouldn't be in the position we are right now. And, and for how many new players we've got, we're in a good sure. position. You know, let's talk about the start of the 17th season. It, it opened up with a loss to Rice, and, and it's, your, it's your first game. And uh, it's one of those days like, okay, what did we learn? What did we learn from this? And, and did you make some adjustments at that point? And you must have done something because you bounced back in your second game as a Division One head coach and you ended up defeating Texas State. Yeah, the biggest problem there was we played like freshmen. Um, we were nervous. We went out there and we started six freshmen and uh, we used another five off the bench and used two to three sophomores and, and it just played like that. We were down 3-0 in the, in the first half and we just played scared and, and we talked about it at halftime, we talked about it after the game and we realized that, hey, we've got that one out, out the way now. Your first game in college is gone. Now let's play like we know we, have, we can play and we did that against Texas State. Well, that was a, that was a wonderful win. Now, if I recall correctly, um, you knew a lot about the personnel that you were getting when you came in interview. You, you'd done a lot of research on yep. who the kids were going to be, and well, you know, you had a take on them then. Has it held up, or, or are they who you thought they were going to be? It's totally different. Yeah, I watched probably three or four games. I watched every uh, interview, every highlights, every little thing, interviews that you did as well, everything. Uh, so I was aware um, of. Um, a little bit coming into the interview process of what I thought I had and uh, the great thing is when I came for the interview uh, the response I got from the people in the room that they had the desire to want to win and want to get better and want competition and and then turning up in January and the practice sessions everybody that was returning was so much better than I originally thought 
Um, I thought originally watching a lot of the videotape and stuff like that and games that I might have had to replace the whole team. And I didn't. I had a good core group of girls here that had the desire and the skill level to, to be at a Division One program. That's wonderful. Now, you had a significant amount of success at Fort Hayes and, of course, Ottawa yep. uh, previously. And you were doing that recruiting some good talent <laughs> to Kansas. Now, do you believe this university, this facility, and of course, Corpus Christi itself will help you uh, down the road as far as in your recruiting trail. Yeah, I always said um, when I was interviewing for this position and then when I first got it that if I can recruit to Kansas, I can recruit to Corpus Christi. Uh, the location, the, the, the quality of education, the $8 million soccer facility, uh, everything we've got going here that I know we can get good Texas kids, good Midwest kids, good kids from wherever in the world um, to come and want to play here. Well, i tell you one thing, it's, it's an exciting start to the season so far, yeah. and we're looking for some big things, and we're really excited when that, that first home game kicks in. That's right. We're looking for a, a yes. big turnout. Any, any message to the fans to get them out here? I'll just come out and enjoy a new style of soccer. Should be a lot of fun. Coach, thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Thank you so much. Craig Shaw, once again, joining us here in the locker room at the Dugan Family Track and Soccer Stadium. Stay with us when we come back with more Honorers Insider in just a moment. At Navy Army, we're proud of our military roots, but you don't have to be in the military to be proud of where you bank. If you live in South Texas, chances are you can join. Each year, we welcome thousands of new members looking for a better way of banking. So carry that card with confidence because we take your financial success seriously. At Navy Army Community Credit Union, does your bank do that? We are your teachers. We are your researchers. We are your artists. We are your leaders. We are your islanders. Making a difference in our community every day. That's our Islander impact. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, let's check in on an Islanders feature focusing on this year's mantra, make an impact. I made an impact. I made an impact. We, we made, made an, an impact. impact. I made an impact. I made an impact. This Islander made an impact. How about you? I made an impact. 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 Our Make an Impact campaign is really a, a comprehensive marketing and branding campaign for all 16 sports and 250 student athletes and it really showcases the Islander Athletic Fund which is the fundraising umbrella uh, for all sports. Uh, fans and supporters can give generally to the Islander Athletic Fund or sports specific and another great way to get involved is through season tickets and so really the campaign is going to showcase um, our coaches, staff, uh, community leaders, supporters um, that have all made an impact, got involved in our program and, and to showcase the various ways that, that they do give back and um, how others in the community could help step up and support us. Right now, uh, we came up with this idea partnering with Campus as they launched the Islander Impact Campaign um, to really focus on our season ticket holders, our supporters, community leaders that have all said that they make an impact and, and showcase the different ways that they um, get involved with our program to support um, all of our, our teams and student athletes. 
Everything that we raise through uh, our Islander Athletic Fund, which is really the focal point of this Make an Impact campaign, um, goes for scholarships for student athletes, um, other program enhancements um, like meals, team travel, um, equipment, and then at the end of the day, really for us, it's about enhancing um, our student athlete experience uh, for each and every one of our Islander. You know, our student athletes really benefit from uh, funds raised through the Islander Athletic Fund in a lot of ways and one, one important way is through scholarships uh, and being able to give that gift and, and allow them to come and get a great education, prepare them for life ahead and still be able to compete and do what they love to do and, and play uh, sports here for Islander Athletics. So that's a huge way but um, other ways that uh, people make an impact with us is um, through other program enhancements. So that could be nutrition. You know, it's very important for our student athletes to uh, as they compete and train at a high level um, to be able to refuel their their bodies to, to perform. And But there's a lot of other ways too through um, equipment, facilities, and, and other program enhancements that, that all these funds go to. You know really our campaign starts internally first and foremost and that's our, our coaches and uh, administrative staff and so we're all involved. We've all said make an impact but our president and CEO, Dr. Cantania, a great supporter of athletics. And on down the line from there, it goes out externally to our community leaders, um, the mayor, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Convention and Visitors Bureau, the port, and our Islander Athletic Fund Board, as well as many others that support through season tickets or Islander Athletic. Yeah, really the goal is, is in my mind twofold. One, to create exposure for our uh, 16 teams, 250 student athletes. We do some tremendous things here and it's just making that known um, to the community, the, the impact that we have. Um, but then it's also really to take our program to the next level and I think in order to do that, uh, we've got to raise private support. Um, you know, we want to compete at the highest level in Division One, continue to be a mid-major breakthrough in, in all of our sports. But, but also give our student athletes a great experience and that's, that's a balanced experience that includes getting involved in the community um, as well as graduating at the highest level. You know, we really want to thank all of our supporters, all those that um, get behind us, whether it's through Islander Athletic Fund or season tickets. We've got a lot of great opportunities. Uh, season tickets start at just $99 and our Islander Athletic Fund has memberships um, starting at $50. And so, uh, really through this, this Make an Impact campaign, um, it, it's a call for the community uh, and surrounding areas to get behind our student athletes, support us, um, and come make an impact with Islander Athletics. Now I have one simple question. I have one simple question. Now we have one simple question. Will you make an impact? We are your teachers. We are your researchers. We are your artists. We are your leaders. We are your Islanders. Making a difference in our community every day. That's our Islander impact.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. Here's what's coming up next for Islanders Athletics. Islanders soccer faces UTSA in their home opener on Friday, September 8th, and then they take on UTRGV on Sunday, September 10th. After a long stint on the road, they return home September 29th to face Southeastern Louisiana. Corpus Christi Volleyball faces number five ranked Texas and number one ranked Minnesota on Thursday, September 7th at the American Campus Classic in Austin, Texas. They travel to Edinburgh to take on UTRGV in the South Texas Showdown presented by Navy Army Community Credit Union. After Southland Conference matches in Louisiana and San Antonio, Volleyball returns home later this month to take on Nichols and McNeese in the Dugan Wellness Center. Thank you. Now back to Stephen King in the locker room. Thank you, Tamsin. Also, I want to wish thanks to Coach Willis Wilson of Onondaga Men's Basketball and Head Coach Craig Shaw of Onondaga Women's Soccer for joining us today here in the locker room. And most importantly, we want to thank you for tuning in once again. I'm Stephen King. From everybody here at the Onondaga's broadcast crew, you've been watching Onondaga's Insider. <laughs>